moment to be remembered for these crippled scouts as they receive the traditional left hand clasp from no less a person than the Empire Chief Scout, Lord Rowallan. The occasions are gathering of 1,600 scouts, cubs, guides and brownies of the Wellington and Hutt Valley area at Athletic Park to welcome the Chief on a visit to Wellington. The display of scout craft is the biggest since the visit of Lord Baden Powell in 1931. Senior scouts of the Hutt Valley and Bays District impressed everyone by their aerial rope work. His Lordship has been an active scout since 1922. During a distinguished military career, he instilled some of this same spirit into his men by the use of scouting methods with great success. After the march passed, Lord Row Allen had something to say to the young people. We are a family of brothers and sisters who are playing a great part in the world already and who will play an even greater part as time goes on in bringing peace and understanding to all peoples. After an absence of nearly nine years, Monowa is back in service and with 380 passengers aboard is leaving on her first post-war trip to Sydney. During the early part of the war, Monowai acted as an armed merchant cruiser in the Pacific and later carried troops to the European theatre. As a troop ship, she was one of the first in at the Normandy landings on D-Day. She came through her service unscathed and now completely refitted at a cost of nearly one million pounds, is taking her place in restoring normal passenger traffic across the Tasman. Local residents of Tefaiti near Rotorua are arriving for the opening of the district's newest sawmill. It's quite a day, and the Maori people who live nearby are celebrating the occasion with a hangi. The men prepare the earth ovens, while the women weave flax baskets, which take the place of plates. The Minister of Rehabilitation, Mr Skinner, arrives to open the mill, which is run by a cooperative group of ex-servicemen. The timber milled is mainly Rimu and Matai, and it's obtained from the state forests in the district. Mr Skinner operates the control lever, and the breakdown of the first log begins. This is an important event for when the mill is in full production, it will handle 8,000 board feet a day. Meanwhile, the wild pig and potatoes for the hangi have been cooking, and it's time to get down to some more informal business. The children wish new mills were open more often. Wild pork cooked the Maori way is really something to remember. Adults, too, enjoy the unusual finish to the day. At the Wellington Boat Harbour, yachts are being prepared for this year's Sanders Cup contest, for which entries have been received from Northland, Auckland, Wellington, Canterbury, South Canterbury and Otago. The boats are 14-foot X-class, and boats and crews were picked after exhaustive trials in each centre. The first to win three races wins the Sanders Cup, New Zealand's yachting classic and most highly prized sailing trophy. Auckland are defending the cup and their new boat, White Heather, is being sailed by the youngest crew in the contest. For the first race, Wellington turned on some typical weather with a 55 mile an hour northerly, and only two boats crossed the starting line on time. The race developed into a tussle between Auckland and Canterbury, the only two to survive the boisterous conditions. And the Canterbury boat, magnificently sailed in half a gale, was first home by 13 minutes. Auckland finished the course after being nearly swamped and went on to win the next race by four minutes. In the third race, Auckland got into difficulties after rounding a mark the wrong way and dropped back from first place to fifth. But brilliant sailing on the wind by Auckland skipper Jim Young soon had White Heather back close behind Northland the leader and the two of them fought it out for the lead. At the top mark, only second separated the two boats and they ran for home neck and neck, first one being ahead, then the other. Near the finish, Northland drew slightly ahead and held the breeze long enough to win by five seconds. A close and exciting finish after a nine-mile race. With three boats each having a win, the contest was at an interesting stage, but Auckland won the fourth race comfortably to put them one up on Canterbury and Northland. Thousands of people crowded the waterfront to see the fifth race and the last if Auckland can do it again. But as they crossed the line for the start, Auckland were in irons near the road and were left well behind as the rest of the fleet, well bunched, fought it out for the lead. But Auckland did it again. Sailing through to windward of the fleet, she rounded the first mark just ahead of Northland and Otago. 
Auckland's forward hand had the spinnaker set in quick time and soon it was drawing nicely and White Heather led the fleet on the long run to the bottom mark. There was little between the boats off the wind and at the bottom mark Auckland was only eight seconds ahead of Otago with Northland close up in third place. But it's in sailing to windward that races are won, and this is where Auckland has shown consistent superiority. Northland threw round on the other tack, and Auckland went about to cover them. The wind was still fresh, and Auckland's light three-man crew was well stacked out to hold their boat upright. Northland were well out to it too, but in a sudden lull they nearly tipped out to windward. Auckland was soon so far ahead of the rest of the fleet that the result was a foregone conclusion. Auckland crossed the line for their third win in the series, three minutes ahead of the next boat. The Auckland boat was superbly sailed by her 23-year-old skipper Jim Young, who also built her. The teamwork of her youthful crew and the all-round superiority of White Heather gave Auckland her sixth consecutive win in the Sanders Cup.